Well, you've heard from the community, and now we're going to break down the data. Next on Eternal Dirtles. This episode is supported by our Dirtle Maniacs, who enjoy ad-free content as well as bonus content that can be found either on Patreon, Spotify, or YouTube. If you're thinking about supporting the show, we'd really appreciate it, and you can find us on any of those mediums. What to do? Hello and welcome to Eternal Dirtles. I'm your host, Zach Clark, and with me as always, Phil Blackman. Phil, how's it going, man? Zach, I need to amend what I said on the last episode of what should be banned and unbanned. Oh, you're taking Obvious- back days? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Obviously... <laughs> You unbanned Sensei's Divani Top, and obviously you just <laughs> launch initiative as a mechanic into the stratosphere. Yeah, yeah I, I, so uh, for when I did this episode, <laughs> I made sure that I didn't give anybody any other information than the three questions I asked. I didn't want to tell them what I had done or what other people had done first. Um, and, and I recorded myself first. Uh, because I didn't want to be influenced by anybody else's things. But one of the main things I forgot was I, you know, I had talked about uh, banning in tomb, which I think is an, uh, is a necessary thing. Uh, and I forgot to say that in, in mind. And I also talked about, um, I didn't talk about unbanning cards because I just wasn't thinking about that. Wasn't in a headspace um, and mana drain would have been unbanned in, in my opinion. So uh, with that said, I have some numbers and I want to, I, uh, I, uh, go down this path with you, Phil, and, and sort of break down some of the uh, some of the numbers that I have put put together off of this. If I may jump in before we get yeah. into the numbers, uh, one of the uh, themes that was uh, present throughout all of this data that we're going to talk about <clears throat> was, excuse me one sec, <clears throat> that was present throughout all this was the, all the talk was about of banning with a slight touch on unbanning. But a lot of the cards that we're going to talk about in this data, whether that's Beanstalk or Psychic Frog or Orchestral Masters or any of these things, one of the uh, things that we highlighted from our last episode that a lot of people were interested in was actually unbanning uh, a mass exodus from the ban list rather than adding more to the ban list. And I think that that also should warrant the conversation. It's not going to happen in this this turnaround, in this ban discussion with Watsi. Like, they're not going to do any of these yeah. things. But I think uh, at large, I think like, as we talk about up the beanstalk as a potential player on the block, but that if expressive iteration and up the beanstalk existed at the same time, would you actually have to make some hedge? And then there would be some variety in those decks as opposed to just beanstalk versus like blanks, everything else. And then it just becomes whoever has beanstalk on beanstalk. Same thing with Orcus Bowmasters and Psychic Frog, where it's if you had Dreadheart Arcanist and some of the other uh, powerful two drops that would otherwise see play, then there, that power level is flattened. We've talked about this, but I just want to highlight that again as an ongoing conversation that I think the community at large should start to lean into a little bit more, even if people don't think it's actually the way to go to actually like voice their opinion that that's not the way to go uh rather than fall into the uh category of every time tempo gets a two mana card advantage engine it's too good or um anytime something that is just like oppressive against an entire macro type uh is uh, totally unstable that there isn't anything to pressure against it i.e beanstalk versus uh expressive iteration and things like that i think that that's where the conversation should go if we're not actually going to ever get rid of the diseases um and the diseases being like the stuff that has become format identity, like days and ancient tomb and things like that. And if we're not going to actually explore banning the diseases in a serious way, then I think actually upping the power level to make it more flat across the table. So there's more decisions to be made is where the conversation uh, not only has to go, but should go if that's where, if that's the timeline we live in, but let's get into the data. Eternal Dirtles is proud to be sponsored by Moxfield. Moxfield is the best magic the gathering deck building website on the internet. You can create, share and find decks from commander to legacy, and even fan-supported formats like pre-modern and old school. You can see all of our decks on our Mox field. Follow the links below to stay tuned. Yeah. I also think that they should just say that these diseases are going to be around forever and please stop talking right. about them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, with that said, so uh, no, no surprise uh, to anyone here. 96% of the people that we uh, interviewed wanted uh, grief gone. That I, I think everyone, you know, that's a... Uh, and I think the only person who didn't say it uh, implied it, but I didn't want to count that because I didn't actually say it. So it could easily be 100%, but uh, 96% of the people say uh, that that they think that days, uh, sorry, uh, grief should go. Um, second place was Psychic Frog at 53%. Um, now, uh, what do you think was uh, third? So tied for third. Tied for third, uh, I if it's tied for third, I'd say it's Bowmasters and Beanstalk. That is correct. Yes. 
Bowmasters and Beanstalk uh, are tied for third. So, so then tied for fourth. Tied for fourth. Tied for fourth. Uh, tied At twenty percent. Okay. Uh, tied for fourth. Uh, if it was Orcus Bowmasters and Beanstalk at three, then at fourth, uh, it was uh, initiative as a mechanic. No, it know. was Days and Glaring Fleshraker or something. Oh, so sure. I, I, I used Glaring Flesh, Fleshraker because not everyone was like really spot on about what they wanted to deal with with Eldrazi as the like, this is, this is the card that they want something from Eldrazi because no one actually knows exactly what it is yet that they want. But that... That card, uh, that got uh, the same amount as days, which is, uh, which is, you know, if you think about the, the those decks and and the ways we think about them, uh, so th- it's just an interesting point of point of data. Uh, one card was in sixth place. Uh, that seems wildly incorrect. Uh, that can't be correct. Oh no, no, sorry, there was no card in six. Everything else was tied for sixth place. Um. And so the tie for sixth place was uh, all one mentions, uh, Dragon's Rage Chandler, Blood Moon, Chalice of the Void, Vexing, Vexing Bobble, Entomb, Initiative, Reanimate, Nadu, and Urza Saga. So all of those cards uh, were outliers, let's say, um, were mentioned only one time. So uh, so let's stick with the data from the, the six cards, uh, the, you know, the tied for, tied for fourth and up, right? Uh, so grief, we you know we don't need to really discuss grief. We I don't feel like it's necessary to discuss psychic frog unless unless your mind has changed or you have uh, something new to say about that card. I yeah I I don't feel as though like grief is the one for sure thing. Like we we all know one hundred percent that you know in next week when the ban announcement comes out that grief is gone. Like that's the only thing we know for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, everything else is like hopefully they take some swings and we don't necessarily know. I, I I would be surprised if they took action against Psychic Frog so fast. It's not yeah. that I don't I I don't see like that it couldn't go because like the all yeah, the synergies. Be upset. Yeah, you know <laughs> w- one of the biggest synergies that I'm surprised didn't come up in conversations with people. People were talking about it as a draw engine. People were talking about it as it's it's blue black, so it just levels up all of these other decks that otherwise are soft to hate in some particular way. Uh, it just makes it so that Grixis Delver is the easy shoe in best thing going on uh, post ban of grief. And w- one of the things that like didn't come up was the uh, exiling cards in uh, congruence with Merktide Regent and just pumping up your Merktide Regent to work yeah. f- work as a functional kill. Like I feel like that's a, a a pretty common play pattern because most of those decks are similarly in that space. And before you would have if it was Merktide on Merktide battles, it would be whoever has the biggest Merktide. And now that Psychic Frog can like level up that battle uh, uh, even more significantly. I mean. I, I personally don't think that Psychic Frog needs to go this go-around, but I mean, the majority likes it, w- wants it to go. Like, the majority sees it as a problem. Um, slim. I a slim think, majority. I will say that. 53%. Yeah, yeah I, I think that it's it's only been out for, you know, since MH3. It hasn't had a lot of time outside of, of what was already a stale format to begin with. Uh, and then it just, like, leveled up what was already the best deck. So, like, it's not like it came in and then overhauled everything. It just, like, furthered everything that already yeah. was. I think that Grixis Delver was already in, in discussion with Bowmasters as the next best thing anyway. It just now Grixis has just more options available to it between Nether Goyf and now Psychic Frog and Orcus Bowmasters. So like that that hasn't changed all that much either in terms of like what what does the format look like in the, as a whole? It's still a day's wasteland shell with the best threats that you can pack into that into that suite. So mm-hmm. that that's not surprising to me. Um I think that if Psychic Frog goes, nobody loses any sleep over it. But I would be it, I, I would not be surprised at all if they were just like we're not we're not even looking at psychic frog as a, in, a, in in a meaningful way, um, yeah. Compared to other problems that they have to solve, and they I would also be have surprised to about, like, if if they said anything like that. I feel like they're either going to ban psychic frog or not even talk about it. I feel like it's going to be one or the other. They might ban psychic frog just because the majority of players are already outspoken about it, and they just yeah. want to you know appease everybody after you know lame ducking the format through the whole summer. You yeah, know? they could they could I, do that. I, I I personally would rather see them unban stuff to contend against. Yeah. Uh, Psychic Frog and what it's doing rather than just opening that slot up to what the next best thing is and then they get they just will unilaterally like you know how like sometimes they'll be like you know we've looked at data and we can see that what is likely to happen after this ban is so and so is going to be the best actor. so they've you know, so- only done that one time I was talking to a lot of people about this they've done it one time and it was for standard so I do want to touch on that t- touch on that as well but continue what you were saying 
I'm saying that that's that's the precedent for taking action against more than one very, like very specific thing. Like we know grief is the problem. Nothing else theoretically that you could you could. I mean, you could argue that there are a bunch of problems, but like grief yeah. is the like the clearest, most blaring offender. So it's like once that goes, it's like what actually is the is the top deck? Is it just a blue black you know scaminator shell without grief, or is it uh, Grixis Delver, or is it something else? Or you know we don't clearly know but like they the only time they've ever taken action against cards where it's like well that was surprising that wasn't on our radar at all like when they banned reflector mage at a standard nobody thought that that card was going to go at the time nobody thought reflector mage was no on reflector that, was on mage the, was, was a problem it was the uh it, it was the other card there was like a energy card that they that they banned like uh, or was that the energy, energy card was the problem it, and yeah. There, yeah, 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 there, yeah, there was. That's I forget it if it was energy or if it was Emmer Cool or whatever it was, but like one thing yeah. was the problem. And then they were like, but if this goes, then blue white just becomes like the best yeah. thing going on. So we're taking preemptive action against that. And, and they've done that again with uh, <laughs> raging, rampaging Frosadon. They were like, right. we're going to ban this deck here. But like the obvious next best thing is to just be playing red deck wins. So we're going to, we're going to nerf that immediately before you even get a chance to, to mess around with it. Um, which yeah, I, I, I honestly I appreciate because then it's like you know if they're gonna just do it in two months and standard this is this is the point I want to make is that standard is a rotating format you have much less time with those cards they should be making changes faster in standard than they're making it in legacy I, I 100% like get behind that as a design philosophy it, because like pro tours and stuff depend on that and and you like I said you have a very limited amount of time. Uh, Literal infinitely less amount of time, right? Like the, than than you do in uh, in Legacy to enjoy those cards. So if that is the case, don't have people go out and buy a two hundred dollar deck, right? And then say like in a month, like yeah, that's trash. You can't, you know, because uh, that's what happens when you when you ban these deck when you ban these cards in standard. Like the entire deck is invalidated. Yeah, because they're reliant on the power outliers that exist in the you know exactly. smaller card pool. Yeah, yeah. I think like if if they actually do take that kind of time with legacy and look at whatever data they're actually looking at. Like who knows what they're actually seeing, but if they only ban grief, then they already, like we already know collectively, like what the next best thing is and what will be the next best thing going into eternal weekend. And it well, will be some my, variation. of That was my argument with up the beanstalk. You know, mm -hmm. I was like, let's, let's nerf up the beanstalk. Let's nerf Grixis Delver and let's nerf, uh, uh, the Riscaminator decks all on the same blow. And then see what the meta looks like after that. Yeah, I, I think that that's where w the. I think that that's where I'm more interested in the max ex exodus off the ban list than I am of putting yeah. more stuff on the ban list. So some stuff that should obviously go. Grief is just a play pattern thing, right? Like it's just yeah. a bad experience. It's not like it's too powerful. It's just a bad experience. It's a good taxi and probe type of, uh, affair. Just get it out of here. Nobody yeah, actually wants to not, not fun. have fun. It's not yeah. fun. There are other cards though that people like, although. They found them as power outliers. One thing that I, I, I mean, I know uh, Benucci had mentioned it that he like like really enjoyed playing with Dreadhorde Arcanist, and um, that was also a shell that always existed with Oko in the format too. So like it was a bit tainted as to like what was going on at the same time. And I think that like when we if we think about like a mass exodus onto the ban list, and then like like, like you just said, and then see where it shakes out from there. I think the the seeing out where it shakes out from there. Maybe it works in modern. Maybe it works in standard or pioneer. I don't think it works in legacy. I don't think that that mindset of let's see where it shakes out works in legacy because the the degeneracy of the diseases that are embedded within legacy will always be the thing that it shakes out to. So it, it's like what what that flavor looks like. It's just a flavor of the same things. But it's like if that that's why I think like taking stuff off the ban list. That way you have to make choices because then you go. Well, what will the format look like? You know that there's this band of like a dozen power outliers, but now we're deciding between those dozen power outliers that's creating enough variety, like because there are so many power outliers that we get to pick and choose and then like maybe we're lining up and then the metagame can move. And like that might make it so that the format feels a little bit more contained in that like we're only playing with this like subsection of like individually powerful cards that are mistakes. But I think it's better than okay, we're just going to go to whatever the de facto only best thing is within the diseased shells yeah. post banning everything. And then that thing will have to go before it, they power creep the next thing in the next set. You know what I mean? It is, it is funny. Um, you know, uh, I was, so a, a, as this episode was airing, uh, the previous episode was airing and like, obviously Bryant Cook has some takes uh, and, and uh, we were having a conversation and his, uh, your, you and him 
uh, agree on one thing. Um, and it's for diff- it's completely different reasons, but the like shake up the format uh, as as an idea is bullshit. You both you both like disagree with, which is very funny to me because your reasons are are like polar opposites. And I don't want to go all the way into them, but I, it's 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 just uh, you know I'm from mid- the Midwest, so I think it's funny. You know you know what I mean. Uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, with that said, you know like so. so you know, I think I I think ideally at this point, like based on this data, it would be really interesting to me. You know, I think uh, Brian Koval Brian Koval was saying like uh, an ideal band band announcement would would see ten cards across formats, and like if we look at the just just what our data shows, right? Six cards from Legacy would be a wild wild ride. But I think it would be like super cool for the format. I don't think again. I don't think that they're going to do that. But man, six cards would be like really cool to see like how the format shakes up. I'd really like to see what the format looked like after that. I would like to also just tag on to that that it would be wild if they banned six cards right in the same announcement. Yeah. But it's I, it doesn't feel like it would be so wild because well, it's the long overdue for a format that hasn't been curated properly. Right. That, that, that's, like, that's what I mean. It's like there are a bunch of cards that, like, if they all went in one go, it's not. It it, it won't feel like oh wow, yeah. they really they really did something. It's, it's like, not like they've, they've been really slow rolling. It's they've been up for a long time, you know. Yeah, they've been slow rolling <laughs> a bunch of things that they should have been taking action on for a long time. And also, the with the way that they produce that they they print cards now, like cards are geared towards four player, and the cards yeah. played in four player are just going to be increasingly more powerful over time because they need to they they need to they're 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 not designing for 1v1 they're designing for four player and then happen to shoehorn it into 1v1 mm-hmm. and that's that means that like not only will ban lists have to be like more often will cards be getting chopped but like more a higher volume of cards should probably be getting chopped at a faster clip like yeah the format is a rotating format because of the design philosophy post COVID. like that's just how it has that to is go. that is the exact th- uh thing i wanted to point out i was like what would actually be an ideal ban list announcement for me was they take some sort of meaningful action, whatever that is, right? And then they say, our philosophy with legacy has changed. We are going to be taking a closer look or a more a defined look at the format and taking action earlier. You will you may see ban announcements in between our normal ban announcement schedule, which they they're already like deciding that the ban announcement schedule is different anyhow. But like sit, having them say something like our philosophy with legacy has changed because of uh, the reaction to the last ban announcement, something like that. That for me would be an ideal. I don't care what is, what cards are actually on the ban announcement. Those words would mean more to me than any one particular card. I I think that I hear you when you say our legacy, our philosophy on legacy has changed. And I go, (laughs) what is their legacy philosophy? Correct. Yes. Yes. So Uh, so not only, not only, I I think they would not only have to be like declare what their legacy philosophy is, but then they would have to like actually define that and then abide by it. And there's just no way that they're going to do that. Yeah. Like there's no, I mean, they couldn't do it with modern, you know, (laughs) <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I would, I would. Well, they've already done that and then abandoned it and then never looked at it again, right? Yeah. Because they then people hold their their toes to the fire when they like are have to contend with the fact that they are pushing cards to like an absurd degree. And like you know, everybody looks back at the look like, at modern philosophy of like no turn four kill or nothing before a turn four kill, right? Yeah. Like we just refuse to let that exist in our format. No turn four kills. P- players can routinely die on you in standard with slick shot show off and whatever the fuck you can die on yeah. turn three. You know, like yeah. that, that's just totally out the window. It's outrageously out the window. The idea that they would abide by yeah. whatever their philosophy is. Previous on format I, boogeyman's don't even make sense. I, I, those are the I, two I think, big ones. <laughs> I think that like a format philosophy for legacy rather than, or I mean, for any format really, rather than saying here are the, the like guardrails with which decks or strategies can exist within it. Like no turn four kills or whatever. I think it should be like, play experience and like uh format oppression right you like, know if cards are available in the like when when they got rid of fury the, i mean the argument of getting rid of fury in modern at the same time when renin six and and bow masters and all this other and stuff Greece. exists it's like they like essentially like what i noticed when they did mh3 mh3 had so many two butts and four butts that were so glaringly obviously because Bowmasters exist. Orchid's Bowmasters yeah. exist and Lightning Bolt exists. There was no other reason or design r- rationale for why cards 
have that have a two butt or four butt should have a two butt or a four butt, right? Yeah. It was only like that's you the look real at the format card, rotation, right? Like once you make your removal bad, right? Right, right. Well, I'm I'm saying that like when like when if if you're if you are as uh, as Watsy designing cards, and if in anywhere in your file you have more than one card that exists at a difference in toughness or a difference in whatever because so and so card exists and we needed to not die to that or not lose to that 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 should be a red flag on the card that you just brought up in the file as the yeah. reason that you have to change your design right because yeah. you're now no longer designing or, to the design you're designing to the design around the problem that you already put in the format that you could just get rid of so it's not a or just say that it's fine you know like look things can die yeah, to bolt. you know things things can die to lightning bolt that's totally okay if you spend three mana on a nadu and it's a three three um, it deserves to die a lightning bolt, you know, like that's a card I, people I, should be able to get rid of, you know, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm also of the, the, uh, mindset that if your, if your thing dies to removal, that's okay. Yeah. If your thing dies to removal and the removal kills you too, that's a problem. So like yeah. when, if Renin six can obsolete your X one and then also kill you problem, if Bowmaster can kill your thing and also kill you problem, you know, like if your removal yeah. is also your win condition, like. That, that, and it's cheap, right? And it's it, like, uh, it, it I seems mean, like people it's, are going to jump in the comments and say, what about lightning bolt? <laughs> no, no, I'm saying like lightning, like yeah. lightning bolt can kill you if you're down to three, but yeah. like, it's not like you can just run out your lightning bolt at your leisure and then incidentally yeah. blank a bunch of cards and it kills yeah. you. Yeah. You know, yeah. we're also making no, no, it so I'm that glad you can't you, I'm glad you, uh, you, you yeah. validated that point. Um, yeah, yeah. It's just you know like, what would be I'm, interesting, yeah, Phil, yeah. is, is, uh, so back, this is, geez, this was probably before Splinter Twin got banned. I wrote an article on Hips of the Coast uh, about the ban list, uh, why it's banned in modern, I think, is, is or that card's banned in modern, I think I called it. And it was a two-part episode. And I went over the entire modern ban list, and, and, and went by, by each thing, I posted the announcement in which it got banned, and then I, I uh, gave, it co gave that context up and decided whether or not it could be unbanned. The unbanned part we do at the end of every year, so that's kind of whatever. Um, but it would be interesting to go over each card, you know, as it was banned in Legacy and look at why it was banned and see if it is for diversity reasons or if it's for uh, power level reasons. Because I feel like those are the two reasons things get banned, right? Uh, aside from, uh, you know, tournament time reasons. Uh, and, and to a point, to a point, uh, Divining Top was becoming a card that people were gravitating towards. Uh, miracles too but not in the numbers i think that that, that would have uh, at that time been been the reason to get rid of it just as a sidebar please anybody who like has an opinion on sensei stuff <laughs> just literally google top miracles from like 2016 and watch any of the good players that are playing top uh even, the, even like the players that aren't good playing top it's the games are not any slower than they are now yeah. it's just it, it's no, it just all, turns out is, a bunch of edge lords edge lords were slow playing it's just, it is just not it, <laughs> it, really it really is comes down not to. The, yeah 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 um yeah, I think there's a point where it really what it came down to, really what it should have come down to, is Wizard should have got much better about uh, enabling judges to give people slow play uh, warnings and then uh, and then game losses because that's that it's too prevalent. But that's like a whole yeah, other. That's a whole different. You know, let me put there, my yeah. tinfoil hat on for that episode. Um, so, but, like, so Zach, I want I want to I jump in and, and ask yeah. you if okay. Let's say they get rid of grief. Let's say they get rid of psychic frog. Let's say they get rid of. Uh, Bowmaster and Beanstalk. Like, okay, cool. Mass Exodus of all these cards that, you, you know, were reasonably on the chopping block. And then what does the format look like? Like, what is what, what, what is the top deck and what is the power outlier of that, of those? Well, of I think what, for what sure Delver is still a deck. Uh, it's just slightly less powerful. Uh, is with, it? Without, without Psychic Frog. Slightly less powerful than it would be with Psychic Frog. Okay. Um, that that's that's my that's my stance on it. it. You know, instead of it being a tier above, like two tiers above everything else, maybe it's one tier, right? Um, and then you have Eldrazi still, right? People are going to start playing Eldrazi. I don't know if that's the best deck in the format. Um, and then you have Beanstalk decks, right? Uh, but you said you well, said they get rid of Beanstalk. Yeah, they get rid of yeah so it's, it's we're, we're going to have some sort of four color control deck in the style of like uh, Delighted Halfling. And ring and uh, Minsk and Boo, that that style of thing, maybe maybe like a Strifo pile type type of deal. Um, I think I think is is an option. Uh, but those are all to me at least somewhat interesting as far as deck deck construction goes. It's not like I know that you're not a fan of that play pattern for for Minsk and Boo, but like 
just jamming every free five mana spell into your into your beanstalk deck is like I do it. I play that deck. Uh, it's not interesting, you know. Like it, even if it was fun, it's not even that fun for me. Even if it was fun, it's like we can do better. You know, like there's just more fun ways to play the game. I don't know what I'm fucking even talking about at this point. But uh, to that end, uh, I think that after that, like, it's kind of like, you know, we go back to decks, decks like eight cast decks, like uh, moon stomping and stuff like that become become the other outliers because then you can attack people's lands. Uh, okay, so there, we, I have we, no uh, idea. If, if we get rid of if we mass exodus that all the stuff that we're talking about, then do, do we just go back to what it was? Like, like around uh, pre Baltimore last when, year, when 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 Lord of the Rings came out, when it was nothing but Ancient Tomb and Urza Saga everywhere, and like everybody was talking about how Ancient Tomb is better, like is actually the best card in Legacy, like more so than yeah. like uh, you know I'm the okay argument with that like, that, though. The best like card. I'm okay with with that as a target because it's not like look that's a deck that you th- those are things that you can hate out, and we have the tools to hate those out now, especially with something like uh, Wrath of the Skies if you're worried about. Um, you know, your enchantment artifact deck taking over, uh, you know, before it was like only red had access to meltdown. Now, like white has access to meltdown and dusty blue and white has access to meltdown. You got to mess around with the man a little bit, but like, you know, I don't know. I think that I'm, I'm fine to live in a world where the ancient tomb decks are good. I'm not fine to live in a world where the blood moon decks are good, but you know, like, what are you going to do? there's going to be decks that you don't you don't like or i don't like that are good in the meta and that's, yeah I, I, that's magic the gathering you should have a rock paper scissors where there are some decks that just beat your deck you know how, how so uh, so i think let me clarify my question too hmm. so asking you how the format shakes out how confident are you that if we mass exited all this stuff that that's what the format would look like how confident am i that delver would be the best deck i would say i would give that i would give myself a uh uh B plus on that on that uh uh prediction. Uh after that, uh some sort of control deck, I don't really know. Uh what was the other one? Eldrazi. I don't know if that would be the tier two deck. Um, you know, maybe maybe you'll see a resurgence in decks like show and tell and stuff because the hand disruption isn't there anymore. So that might be a thing. But I, I think the Days Wasteland Shell Tempo deck will if if that happened would be the best deck if the format goes back like let's say you get rid of all the, like grief goes and then suddenly the ancient tomb decks a la red stompy or you know the urza saga based uh shells that you know have been uh seemingly priced out outside of painter um or uh initiative comes back like if if that's the world that we're steering towards, or if we're uncertain about it, essentially the point that I'm getting to is, would it be more compelling to unban a bunch of stuff that you know is the power outliers and then go, we don't know exactly how the format will play out, but we know that these will be the contenders that will like influence archetypes, but they will be influencing this, like different varieties of the same archetype. That way it's not just, here's initiative, here's I- exactly Urza Saga here's exactly the one type you of know, thing that you do every single time, right? Like, you could be like, I'm going to play again. You're playing against Grixis Delver, and you're like, okay, Grixis Delver's the best thing. But you're like, they could have four different things, and I have no idea which one they might be on. Well, here's here's where it comes down to. Will that be better for the format? Maybe. Will it be better for me and you? I don't think so, because we approach the format in sort of the same... Uh, it, we, appo- we approach competitive play in a very similar stance. We're both control players uh, at our hearts, right? So what happens is uh, not knowing what you're up against kind of sucks. Uh, I'm not, the thing is, you know? I'm not I'm I'm not advocating for like <laughs> no, what no, I would want yeah. because it would be it would like make my experience or like the way that I like to oh, yeah, like yeah, the yeah, decks no, that no. I like to play better. I'm saying that like would it just be overall healthier as it, like right now everybody is on Psychic Frog's ass because it's everywhere. But yeah. if, if if we didn't have only access to Psychic Frog as an option, right? Like we had yeah. Anu, Anu was on and he was like, I played with Psychic Frog. It's totally the real deal. Would Anu even have like really tested or stress tested Psychic Frog in the same way if he had access to Expressive Iteration? Would all would you on Beanstalk just be jamming the Beanstalk plus you know Mono Five drops in a way that's like less uh, flexible than if you had access to a, a, an alternative? Like, I, I, well, I that think is, that's... that is the question, right? Is is if if you could create a world where Beanstalk exists 
or effect like Beanstalk exists in a fundamental way where it's not just the best thing to be doing if you're that kind of deck. That's that's actually why I, I put Beanstalk on the list, because like it's not it's not interesting deck building, you know, like not not everything has to be interesting deck building, but yeah. it's it, it does not create a diverse format. Uh, and, and when the only like pillar of deck design is surrounded by that one thing, it's kind of boring, you know. Two two two, two things on that on that uh, stance that you just mentioned that that it gets kind of boring. If we get rid of all the stuff that we're getting rid of now, mm-hmm. does that like is that pretty much exactly what we've done every other time? And we're gonna see how the format shakes out. And it's inevitably going to shake out in the exact same way where we get to a lame duck position of a similar card advantage effect becomes too good. I think that is, but, is this, the, one of the symptoms of this format now is that we do always eventually get back to that lame duck position based on the age of the, the fact that the internet exists and cards are good. So given that, that is the pattern, right? That has been the pattern every time. Outside of a weird power outlier that like just makes things absolutely horrendous that's like totally nonsensical a la grief or uh underworld breach or whatever every other time it's always this is just the power outlier that creeps the best thing that we're not we're not willing to touch and then we fall back into the same pattern over and over and over again now if we do that now again with even if it's a handful of cards it will devolve to the exact like the pattern will still exist we will fall into the same pattern you and i will have the same conversation again in two months yeah what has never been tested or tried is taking stuff off and trying to attack the the problems of the format by giving other things to uh to to press up against them as opposed to just letting them roam free like the 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 format is an airport and it always just clears the way for the next best thing to slot into de- to day's wasteland and rather than just clearing the way w- like maybe maybe we just add more flights <laughs> Yeah. I don't know. It's okay. a bad. It's a bad analogy, but you know what I'm saying, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, I do. It, it's like, like, like it, it, they always just we fall into the pattern of we just ban whatever to make the next obviously best thing the best thing in the exact obvious shells that we think it's going to be the best in, and then that's it. Rather yeah. than like trying to make, try, try, like, I think because everybody's been so fed up that they didn't take action in like a, two months ago or whatever the fuck they were supposed to do against grief. That like, if you're gonna take a swing now when everybody wants to be excited, like, can you imagine if it was like? The announcement came out and it said, all right, grief, banned. That's it. And then unbanned. And then f- like five cards, unbanned. I mean, it'd be, we, we, it'd we, be, we, people would have things to talk about. That's for sure. It, people would have things to talk about. But like, I, I, I don't know. I mean, we're sitting here and we're talking about it. And we've talked about bands the last couple of episodes. And it's like, doesn't that just sound so much more exciting than, yeah, oh, it does. the cards that we've hated playing with and against are all gone now. And now we'll figure out the next thing that's going to be the thing we hate playing with and against. Well, like, it's always more interested to talk about being additive than reductive, right? Uh, I think I think that's part of it too. Yeah, yeah. I, I well, I think that like they've never they've never tried the other end of the spectrum, and it's like maybe now is the time. Maybe now they should do it. They're not going to, but maybe now is the well, time. Well, I guess we'll find out in approximately uh, five days, se- six days, seven days, whenever this episode drops uh, on Monday, uh, we will find out for sure. Uh, I think that's that is the only thing we can take away from from all all this data is that uh, everyone everyone has an opinion, and uh, like like uh, Mr. Donnelly, my fifth grade gym coach, once said, "Everyone's got opinions, and they're like armpits; they stink." There you have it. There you have it. All right, thanks everybody for watching. If you get a chance uh, and you want to support the show, you can go to our Patreon at patreoncom slash Uh It definitely helps us. Uh, uh, us do uh, add time to our days to uh do things like prioritize making of the last episode that you saw if you're into our content uh like i said it really helps and it helps us get out there to to do more stuff like that so uh th- to that end uh thank you everybody for watching and we will catch you on the next one before you go i need some help please subscribe to this channel and do your part to help sustain the legacy content ecosystem just subscribe to this channel goes a long way to reminding YouTube that people love and support this format. Now, if you really want to go the extra mile, you should think about supporting us through Patreon. Both the links for subscription and Patreon are right here. And if you're listening on an audio format, you can go to patreon.com slash eternal Thanks so much for watching.